Hey everyone! I've been gone for a few weeks and now I'm back. That's it, that's the whole introduction. This video is brought to you by Creeps. Creeps is a hair destruction system that induces a special balding process that leaves everyone looking as old and distinguished as me. Why hold on to your hair? Be a creep. Let it go. I've always been told I have freedom of speech. I've rarely had it explained to me what that is. I'm not that keen on trying to define freedom for the sake of laws and rights and so on, because defining something is a great way of limiting it, especially if you let someone else define it for you. Whatever freedom of speech is, though, we don't seem to have much of it. Let's look past the rhetoric and beyond the words on paper to how much freedom to speak any of us actually has. Your childhood might have been different, but I and everyone I know were told what to say and what not to say at every turn. Soon after we learned to speak, we were told not to talk so much. We were trained not to question our parents. We tried to question their orders and punishments at first, but where we demanded reasons, we got, because I said so, because that's the way things are, or even violence. At home, we learn the limits of what's socially acceptable. How do you think it affects children when we teach them to limit their own thinking and feeling? Don't speak until you're spoken to. Don't raise your voice or say a rude word, even if you're angry at an injustice. We qu quickly learn justice doesn't matter, at least not to our parents. Don't show anger or sadness, and if you feel any grief, get over it quickly. They, they might even tell you, be a man, as if men weren't supposed to have emotions. Children learn some emotions are bad, so they hold things in or let too much out. Kids need to recognize their emotions without prejudice so they can understand why they're feeling them and learn to control them. But they're not allowed a full range of emotions, and they're not allowed to talk about a full range of topics. Don't talk about taboos like politics, money, sex, drugs, racism, and so on, these huge phenomena in the world, or if coaxed into talking about them, your parents might just lie, and you'll grow up believing the lies, and finding things out the hard way, maybe. Parents don't have to have all the answers, by the way, and if they could just admit when they don't know, children might learn from their humility. You could research these things together, but instead, you get told to shut up. In learning what was acceptable and unacceptable, we learned shame. If you don't want to do everything your parents want you to do, they will try to mold your thinking by encouraging, discouraging, permitting, prohibiting, and so on. Their limits become your limits. We learn to be ashamed of how we act, what we say, even how we look. Your body that you were born with is wrong because people who read fashion magazines say so. People from your parents to strangers on the street reserve the right to nag you about your body if you don't fit their expectations. Smile! <laughs> and mind your own business, how about that? Smile. Now, apparently, there are strangers telling people to take their masks off because the government said COVID was over, because anti-maskers are exceedingly ignorant and self-righteous. We're taught to suppress our emotions, not that our emotions are valid and justified, but that since this isn't the time and the place, or since the world is full of injustice, we should just keep quiet and accept all of it. 
I would argue that telling a child that's just the way things are or there's nothing you can do so don't say anything is the same as telling them to shut up. It's a kind of permanent shut up. Hey, quick aside, you know something I learned? Sugar doesn't make you hyper. In fact, in my case, it makes me tired. Parents see kids at parties with groups of friends playing games and come to the conclusion they're hyper because of the cake and ice cream. No, they're excited because they're finally able to do what they want and express themselves and have fun. But even a child's expression of fun has to be curbed and shamed. So kids are taught to think and feel and act only within the strict limits set by parents and culture. Then they're placed under constant surveillance. Some parents give their kids some autonomy, sure, but others are so scared their children might do or learn something unauthorized, they dominate every aspect of the child's life, offering them no freedom to do or say anything. I didn't have it that bad. I had time to play and be myself and stuff, but then my parents weren't under the same pressures to shape me to conform to a culture that believes I should be spending all my time working for someone else. And God forbid kids show any signs they don't fit this mold. Boys who like dancing or dolls inspire gasps of terror from parents who are prejudiced against homosexual and transgender people, so they get pushed into sports they don't like, as if to somehow prevent them from turning gay, because that's definitely how it works. Shit, kids assigned male aren't allowed to like the color pink. Why is that man in pink? Oh, that's Homer Simpson, sir. He's one of your boobs from Sector 7G. Simpson, eh? Well, judging by his outlandish attire, he's some sort of free-thinking anarchist. I'll call security, sir. Excellent. Girls aren't allowed to be tomboys in all households, so they get bought dolls they don't want to play with, ballet shoes they'll never use, and so on. Parents turn their extremely narrow understanding of the world into an equally narrow range of acceptable behavior, and it's the children who suffer. Can children object to this treatment on the basis that they know themselves? No, because parents are not interested in hearing about their kids' feelings. What's the difference between having no freedom to speak at all and living under the domination of someone who doesn't listen to you? These parents think they have to fix the child, and until they do, the child's not allowed to have an opinion on their life and feelings. Sure, kids don't know everything yet, and their judgment isn't as good as it's going to be, which is why a child can't consent to sex. But that's not the same as not knowing whether they're a boy, a girl, or something else. I knew I was a boy from about six, and that I was interested in girls before puberty. But some parents assume their child couldn't possibly know those things, so they ignore the child's wishes and make all the decisions. Many of them reject their own children because those children do not become exactly what the parents wanted them to be. In fact, some of them get so self-righteous, they write books and articles devoid of facts instead of listening to their kids. Any behavior outside the acceptable must be punished, concealed, and blamed on other people. But bullying's okay. If kids are different, they're bad, so it's okay to bully them. Eventually, we learn to shut up and accept authority, and even carry its water. That was great for the schools. We went into school with bright eyes and big questions, and we came out sullen, bored and spiritless. At school, a child's interests and curiosity are suppressed. Only approved questions get answers. Only approved answers are allowed. We learn to obey in an even more threatening environment than at home because we were now watched 
every minute by someone itching for a reason to drag us back into the fold. So of course we couldn't say what we wanted. Our words and actions were strictly controlled, even though we were always told this was the place to go and learn about the world. What, what do you learn by being silent at a desk all day? Well, discipline and propaganda, mostly, to prepare us for a life at work. So when do kids have the freedom to speak? During the walk home from school? So we learn not to question authority, which means when we grow up, we don't know the right questions to ask. If only I had learned to ask why and who says so, and realized that people who wouldn't give clear answers were lying. You're allowed to listen to your parents, teachers, media, bosses, and the state lie to you all day, but you're not allowed to question it. And neither are the teachers. <laughs> Teachers can't teach outside the curriculum. They can't tell kids, actually, this is mostly bullshit. And they didn't learn the truth in school anyway, so they might not realize it's mostly bullshit. What's more, when kids aren't allowed to question authority, they're wide open for abuse. They don't know there's another way to grow up, or that they could be telling someone about their problems. And many of them are still like that when they become adults. They might even seek out abusers, because that's all they know. School conditioned us to accept someone's authority based entirely on where they are in the hierarchy, regardless of what they did or how they acted. It conditioned us to accept a life of taking orders from people we don't like for most of the day. And it taught us to shut up. We had all the elements of the perfect employee. Do I make you nervous? Sir! Sir what? Are you about to call me an asshole? Sir, no sir! After all, there's no way you can claim we have freedom of speech at work. You know, where most adults spend most of their waking time. What you say has to be within the approved propaganda you've been learning all your life. You know, you, you, you want to work for this firm. You like working here. You like working as hard as you can. Of course you'll do overtime. You don't mind paying for your own education to benefit the business. You're not frustrated with the boss's interference. You're happy to go along with any new policies and have no opinion other than complying. And work is like school in that if there are bigots or other bullies around who are given free reign, especially when they're the boss, you probably can't be yourself at work either. Some teachers or other workers get fired just for being gay or trans, because the right wing has flooded the internet with lies about them. It's not just kids who aren't allowed to be themselves. Do, do any professions allow people to speak their minds? Like, obviously not if you're in the media, PR, or anything in the public eye, because you have to say what someone tells you to say. If your opinion uh, clashes with that of the owners, you might get fired. But really, where can you say anything that contradicts the conventional wisdom or the boss? Only in the most permissive and open of companies. Can you voice concerns that what you're doing is bad for the environment? Or that it'll hurt people? Maybe. But if the bosses aren't listening to you, and the owners don't care, it doesn't matter. You can become a whistleblower if you don't mind losing your job and going to jail. That's what freedom of speech means at work. We've been well prepared throughout our lives for constant surveillance. First it was our parents, then it was the schools. As an adult, the workplace, the government, and the electronic devices you use are watching your every move. Sure, you could say what you really thought, but someone might hear. Just like when we were kids, the threat that we're overheard is a great deterrent from saying anything socially unacceptable. You can't say what you want on social media because a corporate platform can kick you off and delete your account. 
Not only do you have to follow all their rules, you might get kicked off because some people reported you even if you didn't break any of the rules. As such, the rules are more like something someone can use to silence you. And if you're going to say that I have freedom of speech because I have a YouTube channel, I can assure you there are a million things I want to say that I don't. I've learned self-censorship. Plus, I can take some of your freedom to speak away, too, because uh, if I think you're being an asshole, I can block you. So in your own home, on your own computer, you can't say what you want. And you can't say what you want outside your home either, because the police can stop you. You might have heard a handful of scientists recently protested the UK government's lack of response to climate change and were met with a battalion of police who arrested them. As enforcers for the state, the police have long demonstrated that they are on the supply side of climate change and will fight any efforts to address it publicly. And this is just one of any number of examples of people being arrested in spite of their so-called rights I can provide you if you want more. That said, if you're white supremacists, well, the police will probably protect you then. The adult world is full of forces that can take away your freedom to speak. What if you're too sick? Possibly because people around you were so nonchalant about COVID they didn't take basic precautions. What if a judge has sentenced you to prison? What if you've been declared physically or mentally infirm and have been imprisoned as a result? What if you're out of prison but still carry a stigma so no one wants to listen? What if you're trans and you live in the US or UK where bigots are trying to legislate you out of public life? What freedom do any of these people have to speak? Freedom's only for people with money. But even if I'm mistaken, and despite everything I've presented, you, I'm wrong, and you have the unlimited freedom of speech you've been promised, clearly it is not a very effective freedom. Being allowed to speak changes nothing. It just means you can vent. That's no consolation to people getting their asses kicked by the state or the boss or the landlord. They can't speak their way out of poverty or prison. We can't calmly discuss our way to a better political system. What's the value of free speech if you can't use it to get what you want? The political system uses violence against you, but you're not allowed to fight back, only to speak. And you shouldn't do that anyway without a lawyer present, or you could incriminate yourself. And while you have the freedom to speak individually, the police will attack a large enough group of people registering their discontent, as we saw over and over again in 2020 when they attacked nonviolent protesters, and which we see in every city that hosts a large international summit. Yet people simply can't understand why others are rioting. Why would they riot? Just because their voices and votes get ignored? Just because the system locks up their friends? Just because there's no freedom and justice in a state system? Doesn't mean you should do anything about it. Just focus on yourself and make money and shut up. There are so many assumptions about the, the power of speech that have little connection to reality. Freedom of speech does not change the system. It is integral to a system that claims to provide freedom. You can say whatever you want, it alleges, while arresting protesters, criminalizing teaching history, and punishing everyone who doesn't accept the system as it is. For those who are briefly permitted to speak, right-wingers in the media will make things up and turn them into villains. It happens every time. But some speech gets you what you want. It's clear being exposed to endless right-wing lies leads to mass shootings, vehicular homicide, fear of anyone who doesn't conform, and the worship of the police and military. Hey, hot women and alpha males who subscribe to my channel, it's me, Evil Chris from WI Had to BS Radio, and all I know is we're free. Okay, it says so in the Constitution, 
says so in the First Amendment. The country's always been based on the idea of freedom, even if no one's practiced it. We have a charter of rights and freedoms in Canada. Rights and freedoms, Chris. That means you have rights and freedoms. You know, like keeping out immigrants. Anyway, thanks for watching me take this guy down like a boss. Buy my merch! Thing is, Evil Chris, words on paper can never grant people freedom. They can only mislead you as to the nature of the state. The state uses force against us every day to comply with its laws, regardless of what rights it says we also have. When you look at how your so-called rights and freedoms are treated in practice, you see they can be withdrawn at any time. You're allowed to speak to the extent that your speech has no effect on power. Your speech must either reinforce the status quo or be powerless. Your voice should be a tool of the ruling class, and if it isn't, you should be silenced or ignored. But we can't know the truth if no one's allowed to express it. And if no one speaks the truth, we can't go anywhere to find it. We don't even know what questions to ask. We can't organize to change things either, because we're constantly surveilled. If meetings get infiltrated and protests and strikes get broken up, but people will still tell you all your life that you are free. To people who don't think, you know, about what the word means, freedom is anything. Every medium from school to work to the media themselves tell us that we have freedoms that we demonstrably don't have. Most people who talk about freedom all the time don't value it at all. The word gets used to shut people up, pass draconian laws, ban words, books, and people. Only by considering what freedom means to you and to others, what it would mean if we were truly free to be ourselves, can you see how little freedom any of us actually has. All right, enough of that. As much fun as that was, we're done. So here are some of the videos I would have liked to make instead.